Hello, in this video we shall try to understand the concept of polarization. We shall see how the wave equation can be written by taking into account the direction of polarization of the wave. In general there are two kinds of wave motion, the transverse one and the longitudinal one. To understand the phenomenon of transverse wave motion, let us consider the example of a string that is tied at one end. The other end of the string is free to move where we give it a gentle shake so that a wave is formed in the string. As shown in this figure, the direction of propagation is along the direction in which the red arrow is shown. When the wave moves along the direction of the red arrow, we can see that the vibrations in the string is along a direction that is shown by the blue arrow. That is the vibrations in the string is along a direction perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. This vibration can be considered along a vertical direction. So this is the direction of propagation and this is the direction of vibration. We can also have the vibration along a horizontal direction that is like this. That is there are two types of transverse waves, one in which the displacement is along the vertical direction and the other in which the displacement is along the horizontal direction. We see that these vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of motion and we denote those waves as transverse waves. To demonstrate the second type of wave motion, we shall take a spring and attach it at one end. At the free end, we shall give a vibration along the horizontal direction and in this case we can see that the wave propagates along the string as compression and elongation. So this region is characterized by a compression and this region is characterized by elongation. And this kind of wave motion is known as a longitudinal wave motion because the displacement from equilibrium is along the direction of the propagation. So in this case if we consider this as the equilibrium position, we can see that the displacement is along the direction of propagation. In this case we define the wavelength of the wave as the distance between successive elongations or successive compressions. And we define the polarization of the wave as the direction along which the vibrations are occurring. So this figure shows the three cases of a transverse wave. In the first figure, the vibrations are along the x direction. And in the second case, the vibration is along the y direction. And in the third case, the vibration is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the x axis. In the first case, we will say that the wave is polarized along the x direction. In the second case, we shall say that the wave is polarized along the y direction. And in the third case, we shall indicate the direction of polarization as n hat. That is, it is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the x axis. Now, for the transverse waves that are occurring in the x direction, we shall write the expression for wave motion as Fvzt equal to A complex E rise to i Kz minus omega t. So we assume that it is a wave that is moving along the positive z direction. And to indicate the polarization of the wave, we shall add x hat and we call this wave as a vertically polarized wave. For transverse waves 
whose polarization is along the y hat direction we shall write f complex h z comma t this is equal to a complex e raised to i k z minus omega t then the direction of polarization of the wave is indicated by y hat and such kinds of waves will be known as a horizontally polarized wave transverse wave motion need not be always along the x hat or y hat direction it can sometimes be oriented at a definite angle with respect to the y hat or x hat direction as we see in the third figure in this case the vibrations of the wave which are indicated by n hat is oriented at an angle theta with respect to the x axis and in this case we shall write the equation as f complex z t equal to a complex e raised to i k z minus omega t along the n hat direction so the polarization vector n hat defines the plane of vibration now the unit vector n hat can be resolved into a horizontal and a vertical component to show that let me redraw this particular section of the figure this is the direction of x and this is the direction of y and the unit vector n hat is oriented at an angle theta with respect to the x axis let us resolve this into two components the component along the x direction will be modulus n times cos theta since n hat is a unit vector this can be written as cos theta now the horizontal component is n hat sin theta and this can be taken as sin theta so that in terms of the polarization angle theta the polarization angle is the angle with which the wave is oriented with respect to the x or the y direction we can write the unit vector n hat as equal to cos theta along the x direction and sin theta along the y direction now the waves are transverse that means that n hat is perpendicular to the direction of propagation therefore when we take the dot product of n hat and z hat this will be equal to 0 thus the wave that is pictured in this figure can be considered as a superposition of two waves one which is horizontally polarized and the other that is vertically polarized that is this wave that you see in this figure is actually the superposition of two waves one polarized along the vertical direction and the second one that is polarized along the horizontal direction we can show that mathematically we know that f complex which is a function of z and t this is equal to a complex e raised to i k z minus omega t and the wave is polarized along the n hat direction and this is equal to a complex e raised to i k z minus omega t and then cos theta x hat plus sin theta y hat when we expand this will be a complex cos theta then e raised to i k z minus omega t along the x hat direction plus a complex sin theta e raised to i k z minus omega t along the y hat direction so we have shown that the wave shown 
to be along the n hat direction can be considered as the superposition of two waves one horizontally polarized and the other vertically polarized the vertical polarization is defined to be having theta as 0 degree and therefore when we substitute this in the above expression we'll get the vertically polarized wave as equal to a complex e raised to i kz minus omega t along the x hat direction for horizontal polarization theta will be equal to 90 degree and this will yield f complex h z t as equal to a complex e raised to i k z minus omega t along the y hat direction.